Welcome to the D Division I Women's Basketball Championship Off Day press conference featuring the Sweet 16 team, Missouri State. We'll hear from Bryce Caleb first, followed by head coach Amaka Gugwa Hamilton. We'll now begin with questions for Bryce Caleb. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When called upon, please state your name and affiliation. We'll first go to Stephen Hawkins. Hey, Bryce, Stephen Hawkins with the Associated Press in Texas. Uh, clearly a, the same Sweet 16 matchup as two years ago, a game, a night when it seemed like both teams struggled shooting. What do you remember about that night, and how do you think you guys are different and have grown as a team since then to kind of be ready for the situation again? Um, just being really young, um, being experienced or inexperienced, and just knowing that we were just there to enjoy the moment. And compared to this year, we know that we were born to be in the spotlight and just showing the nation our game and just being more prepared and fulfilling our roles in order to get to this point. Clearly, you guys have quite a few returning players. So do they. What, what have you noticed or seen different about their club as y'all looked at them? Oh, yeah, they're definitely more active. Um, they play very well together. It's kind of like our team. They have different pieces and parts of their team that make them go. Um, we just need to be aware of that and just take care of business. All right, thank you. Chris, can you talk a little bit about what your off days are like? How are you guys passing the time? Oh yeah, yesterday we did a team activity. We watched The Conjuring. That was pretty scary, but a great bonding moment. And we also toured the Alamo. That was really exciting to learn just about history and culture of our country and how it's moved on and changed to today's time. And just being able to enjoy each other's company, just staying in the hallway, have our distance, but also just having the time of our lives, just playing games, playing Mario Kart, on the switch, so just enjoying each other's company. We'll go to Steve Croner. Yeah, Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. Bryce, what impresses you most about Stanford, and what can you your team do to uh, take away that uh, impressiveness, so to speak? I would just say their experience as well. They've clearly been here multiple times. It's their tradition as a program. And just like our team as well, they have the same pieces, I believe. And I think just in order to take care of business, we need to defend like we did against Wright State and just key in into the, our matchups. We'll go to Steve Terrell, The Standard. Yeah, Steve Terrell, The Standard at Missouri State. Um, there's a lot of attention paid when the tournament started of sort of the workout facilities um, down in Texas. How have you seen those change or have they improved at all? Oh yeah, the weight rooms has definitely changed. We were in a different one than what I believe was shown on the media yesterday. And just knowing that um, we we're able to work out just like anyone else. We know this is crunch time for us. So we need to, we need all this equipment to recover our bodies and just be able to heal as much as we can during this downtime and in, in between each round. So I think it's a huge improvement that they've made and we definitely have enjoyed it and used it quite a bit. I'll go back to Stephen Hawkins, AP. You, you were talking a minute ago, clearly more experienced as a group. Uh, the one significant change, obviously, is your coach. And last year, y'all played under the new coach and had a great year, didn't get this opportunity. But how different are you guys with, you know, since the coaching change? Or, and what changed after that? I think just confidence. We definitely worked on our games individually. We never really did that in the past. And so just seeing everybody step up in whatever moment it is, it's not always our leading score or – our starting five at that. So just knowing that everyone has confidence and the ability to score and guard day in and day out and just knowing that we believe in each other. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. We'll go back to Stephen Terrell. Yeah. Uh, Jasmine has had a couple big games for you in the first couple games of this tournament. Um, You've got some other good posts with uh, Emily and Abby. What do you think they need to do to help you win against Stanford? 
I just think lock in, like against Wright State, they played great defense um, and also just being more physical. I think our posts definitely have the ability to do more. And I think that will definitely show up this next game. And just knowing that they're, they can produce. I said that from preseason that our post players are going to be our X factor. And they've definitely stepped up. And that will be the key for this next matchup as well. Go to Steve Croner. Yeah, Steve Croner again from the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, Bryce, I know you're known for your defensive prowess. Do you get extra motivation going against the Keanu Williams, going against Alexi Hall? Does, does their offensive game raise yours, your defensive game? Uh, I wouldn't say it raises it. I just like to stay mellow, stay the same, and just knowing that I'm guarding – tough teammates in practice and going against our practice squad back home. They've definitely prepared, prepared me for this moment and just knowing that I'm just going to do whatever it takes to get the win, especially on the defensive end. Bryce, can you describe what this unique tournament experience has been like for you? Oh, yeah, it's definitely been exciting just knowing that we're able to even have this tournament. It's definitely rewarding for our program. We know we were heartbroken last year and even heartbroken not to be able to continue to play in our conference tournament. So just having this opportunity and just competing at the highest level that we are right now and just keeping our journey rolling and we know we deserve to be here and just enjoying the moment as we go. We'll go back to Stephen Terrell. You talked about at the beginning um, how when you were here a couple of years ago that you were a young team and you were really enjoying the moment, but now you want to you win and go further than this, maybe more so than you did then. How has Mox help kind of drive that into you guys? Oh, yeah, just like I said, confidence. She believes in every single one of us. She knows that we each have a chance to fulfill our roles and just knowing that we could all produce at whatever time of the game that we need. And just knowing that their coaching staff has definitely developed us as a whole, as a group. So each little piece and puzzle that we have on our team, we know is gonna step up. And they just have great communication within the staff and that allows us to execute our game plans on and off the court. Bryce, thank you for your time today. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. We'll be joined momentarily by head coach Amaka Gugua Hamilton. We're now joined by head coach Amaka Gugua Hamilton, and we'll begin the press conference. Coach, if you could give us an opening statement, and then we'll open it up to questions. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me. Um, just excited to be in the Sweet 16. Uh, you know, obviously we had um, a lot of adversity this year and just most recently notable in our conference tournament. We weren't able to compete for a championship. We had to kind of pull out of that. But we, we felt like our team had a lot of basketball left in us, and we, we felt like this opportunity getting to the NCAA was one that we just didn't want to risk and put in jeopardy. Um, we thought last year we could have had a pretty good seed and had a great run, but this year is just a little different. I think our camaraderie is at an all-time high, our synergy is at an all-time high, so we just wanted to make sure that we got a chance to showcase our talent. Now open up to questions. Use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. We'll first go to Steve Hawkins, AP. Coach Stephen Hawkins with the Associated Press in Texas. Um, I know you weren't part of the game two years ago, but I'm sure you, I know you've scouted it. I'm sure you've looked at that. What if you see different from both squads, your squad and their squad, since that game two years ago? Well, um, you know, Stanford's always good. You know, they're great, in fact. Uh, obviously, this year, I think they're a little bit better than they were a couple years ago since they are the no number one overall seed. But they always have, you know, obviously they have a great coach and Tara. Um, I have great respect for what she's done in her time at Stanford, but even bigger what she's done for the game, for women, um, and being an advocate for women always. Uh, but she's a great coach, and she has a great system, so they've always played well. 
Um, and they've always had great players, so this year is no different. Uh, but for us, I think that uh, kids have gotten better. You know, we, we've done a lot of player development individually. Our players have gotten better, but even just more so gelled as a team um, and as a group. You know, last year I think we, we probably could have had a pretty good run in the tournament, but this year we just have had more time together. Um, we have a lot of synergy within our staff, and we have a lot of synergy within our players and then our players and our staff. Um, uh, like I said, more time together, just enjoying the journey, um, understanding me a little bit more and knowing the system a little bit more. Um, you know, our defense has just gotten so much better, rebounding, everything. So I just think that we're a different team. Um, Stanford's a different team. Um, and, you know, the, the team that can execute the game plan the, the best and the team that wants it more is the team that's going to prevail. And Bryce, you said a moment ago, one of the things two years ago, they were just kind of caught in the moment and just showing being there. But now there's a different purpose. Tell me how you, what you see of that with this group of just their desire to not just be satisfied with being to this point. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I didn't know them when they went on that run, right. um, the Sweet 16 run. But my guess is they wanted to win just as bad as they wanted to win now. I mean, maybe they didn't expect to win, but I know that they had the will to win. Um, but it, it's a little different. Uh, that year they went to the Sweet 16. They started out the, uh, the non-conference one and seven. Um, then they started doing well in conference. It got hot in the conference tournament, won the conference tournament. Um, you know, they you know, had an RPI that was probably like in the hundred something. And so they weren't going to get into the NCAA tournament unless they won the conference tournament, which they did. And that carried momentum throughout the NCAA tournament. They ended up being in the Sweet 16. Um, and then, we, you know, when I got here, uh, we stressed just, you know, preparing for every game and playing for March and so that we can get back to the, where, they, where they left off and see if we can do better. So, you know, our RPI, we had the number one RPI in the country um, for about a week and a half, but we finished with the, you know, eight RPI this year. Our net has been really, well, really good all through the year. We knocked off ranked teams, you know, B BCS Power Five teams. So going into the tournament, the expectation was a little different. It was more of, you know, we we are we belong here. You know, we belong here, and just walking with that confidence and understanding that we're good enough to make it back to the Sweet 16 and even further. Um, so I just think the expectation is a little different. The confidence level is, is higher. Um, and, you know, they just feel prepared. You know, we put in the work. We work really hard on individual skill development. We worked really hard as a team in practice. And, and we're always going to be prepared for games as far as scouting reports and game plans. So I just think the confidence level is a lot higher. The trust is high. Um, and that, that's the difference I see. Not that it wasn't there before, but, you know, just from what the players tell me. We'll go to Michelle Vopel. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the historical perspective of this program and what it means to the city of Springfield. As you know, you know, going to two Final Fours before and how popular the, the Lady Bears are in town. Is that something you, you've you been able to tap into as well? Because um, that, because this isn't a new thing, as you, as you know. It's it's something that the, the fan base, and there's a lot of the fans that are still um, with you, you know, that, that were around back then. And, and how does that help in terms of that, that connection to, to Lady Bear history? First of all, Lady Bear fans are awesome. You know, our supporters, um, donors, everyone, our administration, everyone that backs the program, it's, it's really first class. Uh, and the expectation is to win. If you're a Lady Bear, you come here to win championship. That's what's been done in the past. Uh, been to two Final Fours in the past, and, and that's where this program needs to be and where we're working to get it back to. I think there's been a lot of great coaches that have come through here. You know, Kelly Harper being one who's at Tennessee now, uh, did a great job recruiting some of these kids, and, um, you know, from Katie Abrahamson, but then to the great Cheryl Burnett, and that's somebody that I talk to a lot. I have a great relationship with with Cheryl Burnett, I think that she's an amazing coach. She's a Lady Bear legend. Um, she's a legend, period. So, you know, we just want to continue to make those those guys proud. And, you know, the alums, that's really important. Jackie Styles, I mean, Jackie Styles still reaches out after games. And, you know, hearing that she's proud of us and some of the other, you know, Melody Elliott, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and some of the other alums, they all, you know, reach out. And that's what we want. You know, when I came here, I just said I wanted to be a family affair. Uh, I want... I want everybody to just still feel like they're a part of it, even if they you know, were a part of it in the past. So it drives us, you know, just, just knowing that people recognize your hard work and knowing that people come to the games and support you uh, is definitely a motivation for us. Thank you. We'll go to Stephen Terrell. 
Yeah, Coach. Um, Jasmine has had a couple big games uh, in the first two rounds. Um, coming up against Stanford, what does your post unit as a whole need to do to be better? Well, we got to we gotta elevate our play on uh, the offensive end. I think that there's some layups that we've been missing that we typically make. Um, a little bit more confidence in our outside shot um, and just confidence in our high-low game as well. But, you know, our post players are great. You know, Jasmine, to me, is one of the best post players in the country. And we have four of them that can really play at a high level and have proved it, you know, night in and night out in our conference. They proved it, proved it against Maryland. You know, they proved it against Mizzou. They proved it against all, all kinds of teams from different levels. So I just want them to play with that confidence, um, know what we're looking for. We're going to isolate them in situations where they can use their strengths. And then, you know, they also have to play off of some of our sets, things like that. Defensively, though, it's going to be key for them. Stanford has some really great bigs, and they're deep in that spot. Um, and they're big and athletic. So um, it's not that we've never played against big athletic bigs before, but you know you have to pay attention to detail. KYP, understand where we're trying to exploit them on, on their, um, in their offense and, and just go out there and do it. We'll go to Steve Croner. Yeah, Coach Steve Croner for the San Francisco Chronicle. A lot of times in a lead up to a game, uh, you talk about matchups, player against player, but there's also the matchup head coach against head coach. You've talked about, uh, you know, what, what you think of Tara, but when you get in the game, do you have to try to think how she's thinking? You know what I'm trying to say? What is your perspective on going up against Tara Vanderveer as a head coach? Well, it's an honor for one. Um, she's a legend in our game. Uh, one of the best coaches to ever do it. Uh, so I, I respect her for sure. But just like I tell our team, you know, we respect all fear none. So I'm not going to go in there scared just because of everything she's accomplished. I understand I'm a young head coach, but I'm, I'm confident in what we what we do as a coaching staff, um, what we do as a team. And I'm just going to go in there and walk with the same confidence I always do and just focus on my team and, and putting them in positions to be successful. I'm not going to try and get in her head. I mean, she's brilliant. She's going to have a great game plan. Her team's going to play at a high level. So I just need to focus on us and what we do and make sure we do it to the best of our ability. We'll go to Dan Lucy. Hey, Coach, uh, this is Dan Lucy, Color 10 in Springfield. Uh, you just mentioned it a second ago, respect all, fear none as a motto for this team. When you're going through the Valley, you guys are the, are the top dog in the Valley. Now you're taking on the number one overall seed. That fear, respect all, fear none has a different meaning. Do, do, do you talk to your team a little bit about that? Uh, it has the same meaning. You know, we respect Stanford, but we're not going to fear them. Same way we didn't fear Maryland when we played them, who's one of the best teams in the country as well. So uh, to us, you know, we don't play the front of the jersey. We got to focus on us and we got to believe in our talents. And we got to believe that we belong. I think that, you know, our team, what drives us a lot is that we feel like we don't get a lot of respect. Um, and that's true. You know, you don't see we're, we're a ranked team all year and you don't see Missouri State all over the place because why? Because we're mid-major, I guess. I don't know. But we have one of the highest nets um, in the country. Uh, last year, we had the highest RPI in the country at some point and finished with the top 10 RPI. So, you know, we, we've, I think, earned the right to be respected and we do get disrespected and overlooked. Um, so that drives our players. They want to prove that they can play with some of the best players in the country and that they are some of the best players in the country. So if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. Stanford is the best. And so we're not going to look at it as a, oh, my gosh, we shouldn't be playing them. We don't belong here or fear them. We're just going to try and do what we do and go out there and give it our best shot. The last question today, we'll go to Stephen Terrell. Yeah, Coach, you've been in the bubble for a little bit now. Um, kind of what's that experience been like with your team? Uh, with the team, it's been great. Um, you know, obviously, the, the NCAA tournament brings a lot of excitement, and there's usually more activities and things like that that we're not getting, you know, the, even the send-off from our fans and having our band and cheerleaders and all that stuff. You know, we're not, we're not doing that. But at the same time, you know, especially – well, my, my philosophy just period is to enjoy the journey and stay present and not take any day or anything for granted – um, and I've been preaching that since day one, but just when the pandemic hit, you know, it kind of hit home a little bit more. And so we've just been trying to enjoy each other. And this is no different. Having Being in the bubble and having more time with each other, even though social distancing, um, when we can get together, we try to play games, team bonding, just try and enjoy the moment, stay present. Because 
you know, this is a dream. It's a dream come true. And for them to do it twice is a, is a testament to the talent on our team um, and, you know, our coaching staff and the previous coaching staff. But, you know, a lot of people don't ever get to experience the Sweet 16. So we just want to try and take advantage of every moment we get and just in, enjoy the ride for sure. Coach, thanks for your time and good luck this weekend. Thank you. That's it for today's press conference. You can find a recording of it on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Thanks for joining us.